Hello, I'm Scott Florence and I know these aren't my new videos, but if you'll bear with me to the end, I'll be able to explain that. And just now what I'm going to do is an overview of the latest news that's interested me. Now first, researchers from Ohio and Kansas State Universities have been able to capture images of atoms vibrating within a molecule, and this is the first time that this has ever been done. And they did this using an ultra-fast camera. Now the way they managed this is they used ultra-fast laser pulses to knock one of the electrons out of the orbit in the molecule, and when that electron fell back into the molecule, it scattered in much the same way that light scatters off an object that you're trying to take a flash photo of. And they discovered that they were able to control the quantum trajectory of the electron by using different lasers. The molecules they took pictures of were those such as nitrogen and oxygen, which are very common gases, and they fired laser pulses at them every 50 femtoseconds, which is 50 quadrillionths of a second. Yes, that is a number. Next, a discovery has given us a better idea of why we are here today, and all made out of matter rather than antimatter. Now, the theory behind this is that antimatter has a slight difference in decay time than normal matter does, meaning that at the Big Bang, when equal amounts of matter and antimatter were formed, the antimatter decayed first before all of the matter and antimatter collided and formed pure energy, which means that for about one in every billion of particles that were formed at the Big Bang, one particle of matter remained. Now both the LHCb and the CDF performed experiments to try and look at the decay rates of antimatter compared to matter, and they both got values which were extremely close together. LHCb got 0.8%, whereas CDF got 0.62%, and those percentages are the percentage difference in decay rates between matter and antimatter. And due to how close these results are to each other, there's about a 1 in 16,000 chance that it's wrong. So it's a very safe bet. Now, new measurements of the W boson has narrowed down the field of view that we need to look at to try and find the Higgs boson, i.e. the God particle. The W boson is one of the fundamental parts of our universe and is responsible for the wink interaction taking place. And thanks to its measurement, we are even closer to finding out the mass of the Higgs boson, i.e. the God particle. And if you're not aware already, essentially what the Higgs boson is, is the carrier of, is called the Higgs field, which is responsible for giving everything in the universe mass. And it is the only particle that we theorise that we still need to find. Now, I wasn't going to talk about this until it was confirmed, but seeing as it seems to be pretty much everywhere on the internet by now, I figure I may as well. Now, of course, what this is, is the neutrinos and the fact that they may not have gone faster than the speed of light after all. What the researchers at the LHC seem to be thinking now is that they did make a mistake in the measurements of the neutrinos, so they may not have gone faster than the speed of light after all. What they think they messed up on was quite simply the wiring. They think that that may have given the 60 nanosecond change in the measurements. Now that's not the only theory that they have about where they went wrong. Another theory is that they may have suffered from relativistic effects from the GPS system that they were using to time the neutrinos. Now when I say the relativistic effects, all I mean is the GPS system moving in the same direction as the neutrinos were causing about a 60 nanosecond change in the measurements, meaning that the neutrinos may not have gone faster than the speed of light. But I think they're going to be confirming that later this year, sometime in March or April. Now the reason that you haven't seen any of my videos that I said that I was going to be doing is because of several reasons really. One of them is that I keep changing my mind about what I want to do. At first I wanted to do quantum physics, then I wanted to do relativity, then I wanted to do astrophysics, then I wanted to do the beginning of the universe, then I wanted to do what happened before the beginning of the universe and where it may end up. But I think what I've finally settled on now is I'm going to be doing it about string theory, which means I can do black holes. For instance, did you know at the centre of a black hole according to string theory, there's a rip in some of the dimensions and that it suggests the existence of the multiverse etc etc. But due to some recording issues and me changing my mind quite so much, I've had to delete about an hour's worth of video. Also I'm finding some issues with finding animations and such to make it appear even more interesting. That's all for now. If you have any questions, corrections or suggestions, leave them down below. Remember to subscribe and like and I'll see you next time.